Today's the day. Back to school for most children across the country. That means lunch bags are packed, the backpacks are filled. Today, maybe what, the textbooks will be handed out? A lot of talk about math everywhere in the country, but notably in the province of Ontario. So we're going to get the equation right this morning. Vanessa Vicaria is the founder and CEO of a math tutoring company, which is called The Math Guru. And couldn't we all use a guru in math? So good <laughs> to have you in this morning. Thank you so much. Wanted to have you in because just the other day, something that caused a lot of alarm, uh -huh. uh, certainly some raised eyebrows, with the results from Ontario Education Quality and Accountability Office that fewer than half of children in grade six had met the provincial standard in math, fewer in half, mm -hmm. according to the latest standardized test scores. So help us interpret that. How concerning is that? So, I mean, it's definitely concerning that there's a decline in scores. I think it's important for people to know that the provincial standard is not a passing grade. It's 75 or higher. Okay, so that's a B grade. So it's a B grade, a right. B or an A. Right. So that's what we're saying. It's definitely problematic, and it points to two things. One, that there has been an increasing issue with the way kids are learning and being taught math. Mm -hmm. But B, that there's a, an increasing disconnect with a standardized test that was created over 20 years ago. Okay, so we want to talk about both of those. Yeah. Let's talk about the test itself. Many people sure. say, is a standard standardized test even the right way to mm -hmm. measure something like I this? Think that's, I think it's a really important question. It's important to have numbers. So a standardized te test can tell us stuff, but I think it's the weight we place on it. We also know that in this same time period, there has been such a great increase with regards to anxiety and specifically test anxiety for kids. So if you're thinking about it that way, I mean, that's also contributing to the fact that they're doing poorly on a test where there's immense pressure placed on them to succeed. Another thing is the way the EQAO is designed is not necessarily reflective of how students are taught to test in class. So for example, there's a huge multiple choice component. Kids for the most part don't do multiple choice math tests. And you know as well as I do, like you know when you're in university or in high school, studying for a multiple choice test is a whole other ball game. Right? Sure it is. almost has nothing mm -hmm. to do with the math. So I think there's a few issues there. Okay, for, that's with the testing itself. Come mm -hmm. back to the the actual math. Let's see that, because yeah. what is going on in Ontario is something called discovery math. Mm -hmm. Help us understand what that is. Okay, so I think I'm so glad we get to talk about this because I think a lot of people don't understand what it is. Hello, um, me. <laughs> hand up in the air. Okay, okay. I'm gonna just do the quickest example. So Basic, back to basics math is saying, hey, guess what? If you add two integers in whatever order, you get the same answer. One plus two equals three, two plus one equals three. Discovery math would be giving the kids a list of questions. One plus two, two plus one, three plus four, four plus three, and allowing them to be like, oh my gosh, when I answer these questions, no matter the answer of the numbers, this is the rule. So both really important skills to have because yes, you need to know the rule, but it's really cool and inspirational to be able to discover it and think, think critically about so what you're doing. So group problem solving, thinking, that's part of the new math, this discovery yeah. math. And it's not as abstract as people think. It's not like, there are definitely, again, there's always issues. I really think it's so important to have both. The idea of going back to basics, like, I'm not gonna ask you personally, but did you love math? You know, even, even adults who learned basic math weren't successful in math, they hated math, they had anxiety around their math classes, so it wasn't working then, and this isn't working now. Okay, but now the province of Ontario is embarking on a study, mm -hmm. input from all sorts of uh, people and players in terms of whether it should go back to basics mm -hmm. and move away from discovery math. Yes. And where do you fall on that? Well, I think it's really important, again, to, I think we have a really interesting opportunity to finally come up with something that works, to say, hey, look, for decades, this is a tale as old as time, like people have hated math forever. What if we actually created a curriculum that had the basics, that had the critical thinking, that was relevant and inspirational to kids' lives? Like, kids don't learn or process the way they do back then, and they don't need the same skills. They need different skills now, and they need some of the skills from before, and we need to create something brand new. Do you think, I mean, because, I mean, the need is there. Mm -hmm. We need math for the new economy, for Absolutely. the new job. So it, the imperative is there to get something that is is, is uh, going to lead into the future. I think people are just so bent on having a quick solution, right? This idea of like, oh, in two weeks, we're just going to make a few changes. And like, oh, in a year, we're going to have a new curriculum. I think we all know that real and meaningful change doesn't happen overnight. And if we want to really, really make systemic change, mm -hmm. like really change the culture surrounding how we approach and feel about math, because like you said, it's more imperative now than ever that kids not only know math, but that they understand it in the world around them, right? So 
I think if we can all kind of be like, we all have the same goals in mind. We all want a generation of kids who loves math, who understands math, who, you know, who are math literate. If we could all just team together and stop like pitting sides against one another, I think that'd be really helpful in eventually not too far in the future, but not tomorrow, coming up with a solution. So maybe this period of reflection and yes. questioning is a good one. But in the meantime, it's day one mm -hmm. of school. And I'm thinking of parents going, oh my gosh, yeah. my kids are going to come home yeah. with these questions and I can't help them. Mm -hmm. What are we doing right now? I think, you know, I've been thinking a lot about this because people still want a solution. And I think the best thing we can do is let, you know, so teachers, many teachers in elementary school aren't even necessarily that comfortable with math, but they have a curriculum document that tells them exactly what they need to teach. And they've been planning lessons and making sure that they can go into the classroom confident. I think the best thing we do is let them do their jobs and make our kids feel supported because one of the big things that we're not really tackling in schools or at home is like this idea of anxiety surrounding math. And the more comfortable we can make our kids feel, the more supported we can make them feel, the more resources we can kind of tackle and team up together. I think that's gonna actually play a huge role as an interim solution. Okay, one plus one. <laughs> I've got those basics. Anyway, thanks so much for having, uh, for coming in. A really important issue, and Vanessa Vicaria with us this morning.